Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the seventh video in the LibGDX desktop tutorial. So in the last video, we did the player movement and shooting, along with the thruster animation. And uh, so in this video, we're going to be doing the asteroids. So like I said in the previous video, um, this is less of a LibGDX tutorial and more of a general object-oriented design tutorial. Um, this is how I set up the game, and uh, of course it could be set up differently if you wanted to, but uh, this is how I did it, and I'm just showing you like one of the possible ways to structure your game. So PlayState has access, or a reference to everything, player, list, asteroids, enemy bullets, and flying saucers. We already have the player and the bullet list here in PlayState, and now we're going to add asteroids. So let's do that here, private array list, oops, asteroid, just call this asteroids, and uh, let's go ahead and make this thing. In the entities package, new class called asteroid. Now asteroid is pretty simple, again, like everything else, it's going to be a space object, and um, there are three types of asteroids. There's the small ones, uh, medium and large, and uh, every time you break a large or medium one, it splits into two of the uh, next like size asteroid. So large splits into two mediums, and medium splits into two small ones. And uh, I'm just going to use integers to identify the type of asteroid. Of course, these integers can be anything you want, but you know, zero, one, two makes sense. Large is two. Okay. So private int num points and private float dists. What exactly are these two for? Well, they're going to help me generate random asteroids. Um, so basically, this is how I do the asteroids. I have the asteroid center here, this center point. I also have the asteroid radius, which is specified by this outer circle, and then the asteroid radius divided by two which is this inner circle. So I this is the like target area. I specify a number of points that I'm going to use for the asteroid. If I say, for example, use eight points, it's going to look something like this. And then I'm going to randomly pick points anywhere from radius to radius divided by two, basically anything in this red area. I'm going to pick random points here like this, and I'm going to use those as the shape of the asteroid. So all in all, it's going to look like that. So that's like a randomly generated asteroid. And uh, pretty much that's how I'm going to do it. So that's what num points is for, and dists is for like the distance of the point from the center. So this one's like really close to the radius, so is this one. This one's really close to radius divided by 2, so that's what distance is for. So let's get to it. Uh, we're also going to need to remove, just like the bullet, to the, be able to tell when to remove the asteroid from the list. Over here, public asteroid. We're going to give it float x and y starting position, and then a type. So just set all those. x. Y and type, and uh, now let's uh, set the num points and dists. They're going to be different for different types of asteroids. So if the type is small, we're going to use eight points, and uh, it's going to be with height is twelve. That means the entire length of the circle is going to be twelve. So that means that the radius is six, and radius divided by two is three. Um, speed, it's going to be random. The small ones are pretty fast, so anywhere from 70 to 100 pixels per second. Import that. And uh, the medium ones are going to have 10 points, and they're going to be a little bit bigger. Width and height is going to be 20. And speed, it's going to be a little bit slower. Uh, these are anywhere from 50 to 60 pixels per second. 
And the large ones are of course large and they move slow. So num points for these ones are going to be 12, width and height is going to be 40, and the speed is relatively slow, anywhere from 20 to 30 pixels per second. So we also need a rotation speed, anywhere from uh, negative 1 to 1 radians per second. We also need a random direction that the asteroid will travel in. Math utils are random. 2 times 3.14145 pi, pretty much. Um, this is just uh, to get a random direction in every all 360 degrees. And uh, of course set the vector using cosine and sine radians and then multiply by the magnitude speed. Math utils that sine radians times speed like that. Okay, and now just like the other uh, the player class, we're gonna do uh, shape x and shape y to hold all the points. Shape y is new float num points, and also we need the discs. And uh, let's set the radius. Radius is gonna be width divided by two or height divided by two, same thing. And we're gonna use a for loop to generate random distances. Uh, from the center. So disk size is equal to uh, math, .u math utils at random. Again, anywhere from radius divided by 2 to radius. That's everything in this red area here. And we're going to use set shape, which is a method that we have also in player. Basically, sets all the vertices. Private void set shape. And uh, since the asteroids are randomly generated, uh, we can actually use a for loop to set all the points instead of setting them manually like we do in player here. Here we just set them manually. But uh, asteroids are randomly generated, so we can use a loop for this. Angle 0, int i0, oops, i is less than number points, i++. Plus plus. Shape x, i is going to be x plus math utils dot cosine angle plus radians times dis i and shape y i and y plus and pretty much the same thing except it's sine. Okay, and we're going to increment the angle by 360 degrees divided by num points. There we go. So that's just the loop that's going to set all the points for our asteroid. So let's go ahead and make a couple of getters. Get type. We're going to need that if we want to find out what type the asteroid is and what type to create after we destroy this one. Uh, Boolean. So we know to remove the asteroid. And again, like always, we're going to need update and draw. Float dt. Let void draw shape render sr import. Okay, so update is similar to the bullet, just goes in a straight line. X plus equals the x times dt. Oops. Uh, dt y plus equals dy times dt, and we're going to have it rotate. Rotation speed times dt, and then we're going to set the shape, and we're going to make sure it wraps around the screen. So really simple stuff. That's pretty much it. So in draw, we're gonna set the color to white, and we're gonna begin using shape type dot line, and then we're gonna end here. Okay, so the drawing is pretty much exactly the same as in player. I can just go into player and copy and paste here this draw ship code. Like that. Let me just put it over here. There we go, simple. Now, uh, back in play state, we can actually import this asteroids class now. So now, we have three things, player, bullet, and asteroids list. We're gonna do these two in a future video, but for now we have these three things. Let's go ahead and test out the asteroids list. First off, 
let's uh, make it over here in the init method. Asteroids is equal to new array list. Oops. Okay, asteroid, asteroid. Okay. And uh, just as a test, let's go ahead and randomly just add an asteroid in here. Asteroids add new asteroid. We're going to set it at position 100, 100. And a type is going to be large. Um, might as well see if the medium and small work as well. So, medium and small. This one's going to be a 200, 100, and this one's 300, 100. Doesn't really matter. This is just a test. Oh, wait. I forgot. Nothing's going to happen because I didn't update or draw them. <laughs> so, public void update. We have get user input, update player, update player bullets, update asteroids. So, for int i equals 0, oops, i is less than asteroids that size, i plus plus. Uh, asteroids that get i dot update dt and if asteroids that get i dot should remove I'm gonna remove it asteroids that remove i i minus minus there we go and then draw we draw the player draw the bullets and now draw the asteroids print i equals zero i is <sighs> zero i is less than oh my god asteroids that size i plus plus uh, asteroids .get I draw sr there we go so let's see if this works there we go we have the three asteroids there's one large there's one medium and there's a small one over there huh. oh it hit me we don't have any collision though so so you can see the large ones are pretty slow the mediums ones kind of fast and the small ones probably dangerous anyway so yeah that's it for that um let's see I'm at 12 minutes I guess maybe I could get started with the uh, spawning of the asteroids um, for this video I guess yeah I can start that so uh, we're gonna finish up this video by doing the spawning asteroids Thing. So first off, we're going to need a level. This is going to tell us what level we're currently on. We're also going to need total asteroids and private int num asteroids left. This is mostly for um, just doing the, what do you call it, the music? It's not really music, it's just a thumping kind of pulse thing. But uh, it gets faster and faster as you destroy more asteroids in that level. Um, so... Yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, so in init, uh, we can initialize all those. We're going to just do level equals 1. And total asteroids, number of asteroids left. We're going to make a new function called spawn asteroids here. This is going to spawn our asteroids for us. So private void spawn asteroids. Like that. First thing we're going to do is asteroids.clear. It should already be empty, but you know, might as well make sure. Int uh, num to spawn. This is the number of asteroids, of large asteroids that we're going to spawn, and it's going to be 4 plus level minus 1. So pretty much the first level is going to have 4 asteroids, and then the next one's going to have 5, 6, 7, 8, and then it's going to keep going up to infinity. You're never going to make it up to there, so it doesn't really matter, you're going to lose eventually. Um, total asteroids is equal to num to spawn times 7, and it's times 7 because the large ones split into 2, and then those two medium ones split into 2 more, so that's like 4 small ones, 2 medium ones, and 1 large one. And uh, num asteroids left is equal to total asteroids. And uh, yeah, so we're going to use a loop to just spawn these asteroids in. As less than num to spawn, i++. Plus plus. There we go. So first off, we're going to get the position of the asteroid. This is going to be just random, matthewtills.random, game.width, oops, import, make sure you're importing our game here, float y, matthewtills.random, 
game dot height and uh, yeah okay so we don't want the asteroid to spawn right on top of the player so we're gonna have to check we're gonna do float dx is equal to x minus player dot get x float dy is y minus player dot get y okay wait I don't have a get x or get y that is weird pretty sure space object has it no it doesn't that's weird so let's just put a couple of getters in space object. Public float get x, return x, public float get y, return y, oops, like that. There we go. So back in play state. Okay, those are fixed. So float dx and float dy, and then float distance. It's going to be float math.square root dx times dx. This is just the distance formula. Hopefully everybody knows it. So uh, if the distance, or not if, we have to continually check if the distance is less than something. If the distance is less than 100 pixels, if the asteroid is too close to the player, then we're not going to spawn the asteroid there. We're going to pick another random point. X, pretty much this, again. Just get rid of this here. So just pick another random x and y point for the asteroid if it's too close to the player. Or if it's in within 100 pixels of the player. And again, we're going to have to check the distance to the player here. So just get rid of all of these. I could probably have just done this in a do while, but whatever. Uh, so yeah. So you know, once we get past this loop, that means we found a valid position for the asteroid, and we can now put the asteroid in there. Asteroids that add new asteroid x, oops, using x and y as a starting position, and a large asteroid. Cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and try running this. There should be four asteroids. Okay, there they are, and hopefully they won't ever spawn within the or near the player. At least they should prevent that. They should spawn at least 100 pixels away from the player. So that's pretty much it. Uh, in the next video, we're not going to be doing the flying saucers or enemy bullets because that's that's kind of like other stuff. We're going to be doing a uh, collision between player, asteroid, and bullet, and asteroid. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is the way I set up the game again. PlayState has player, bullet, and asteroids. And I'm going to be doing all of the collision within PlayState. So since PlayState has access to everything, PlayState knows where everyone is. So, it, I don't know, it's just natural. I guess for PlayState to do all the uh, collision. So that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be, you know, doing the shooting of the asteroids collision type stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.